Hello everyone, this is Anton Dinoj from PocketNow.com and today we're gonna take a look at the software on the Nokia N9 which runs Migo version 1.2 Harmutan. Now this version of Migo and Migo in general is nothing like Windows Phone, iOS or Android but you will see lots of similarities with all of these three platforms. So without any further ado, let's get to the software tour of the Nokia N9. The Nokia N9 is a pure touch device as Nokia likes to call it and they have managed to build the smartphone without any need for a hardware or capacitive button to operate the phone. Instead Nokia has built it together with the, the platform Migo so that the single gesture which is most common for most people or for every people, the swipe, is at the center of operating the phone. So basically you will only need to swipe your fingers on the screen to operate it. Now what you see here is the home screen of Migo 1.2 Harmatan and as you can see it's a list of icons and it might resemble the application tray of Android or even the icons on uh, iOS. Now in terms of similarities you will find the first similarity here on the home screen with the icons. This is a similarity with iOS and Android, but uh, Nokia managed to introduce not one, but three home screens which they call panels. And this is resembling Windows Phone 7. So we've got one panel here. Swiping to the left will take you to the second panel, which is for multitasking. And swiping again to the left will take you to your news feed, where you will see your current date, the day, your location as well as the weather, any notification which you might receive right here regarding new email messages, missed calls or text messages and right below this part right here features your news feed which aggregates your news feed from Facebook, from LinkedIn, from Twitter, from uh, Skype even which is scrollable and of course updates uh, at a certain interval and swiping left once again will take you to panel number one or two because we have one on the right and one on the left but you just can go forever like this. Tapping at the very top of the screen right here on the date will bring you a shortcut notification like screen where you can uh, quickly let me just zoom in for you to see where you can quickly switch your profile to silent beep you can of course play with the volume controls and the volume for the media playback you will have a notification whether you are connected to the internet or not we are currently in airplane mode but connected via wireless to our router and you can quickly toggle your online availability for the accounts which are set up on the phone in our case we have Facebook and Skype so you can uh, bring them all online, all offline, or you can toggle them one by one. Now here's where the swipe comes in. Wherever you are and whichever application is on your screen, swiping from either side will take you to your home screen. Let's make a swipe from down towards up and here we go. Swiping once again to the left will take you to your application screen which is your multitasking screen where all applications which are open will have a dedicated card which is very webOS like or a Windows Phone 7 like but it's pretty pretty good so you can whenever jump back to the application you were previously in. This is a setting which you can enable in um, inside the settings of the phone. By default when you swipe from the top towards the bottom you will get back to your home screen but if you activate the setting swiping from up to down will close the actual application and unload it from memory. So instead of just taking us back to the home screen it just closed the application and it disappeared from the multitasking screen. Let's get back home and let's take a look at the applications which come with the Nokia N9. Of course you'll find your typical applications like your phone, contacts, search, Internet Explorer but uh, What's cool with Nokia devices is that the SPU based company always packs navigation and maps. So what's really cool about this phone is that it has Nokia maps, which were previously known as OV maps, but Nokia rebranded them. 
and the maps and the mapping data is really really good and we should say that the GPS part of the phone is also great in finding GPS signal and having a quick fix as you can see it will load our current position in just a couple of seconds tapping on that little icon and we are right here where we are currently situated and since we're talking about the maps let's take a look at the uh, navigation which is called Nokia Drive it takes a little bit of time launching but uh, there we go it's currently looking for a GPS signal but it's the typical Nokia GPS navigation application which we are glad that Nokia brings also to Windows Phone 7 as it brings it to Mego and to Symbian devices too now let's just get back and see what else is here we've got of course email application calendar clock the clock has a uh, new let's say minimal minimalistic towards futuristic look to it you can set your alarms as you would with the any other platform actually I should tap on the plus and uh, you just drag the uh, minutes and the hour to your desired position and you have your alarm set we have camera application gallery application and uh, let's just take a look for just a small period of time at the gallery application as you can see all your pictures and videos taken with the phone are represented here well, opening a certain picture, let's just take this, well, actually this is a video, let's just swipe back, go back to the uh, gallery application, back, here we go, this should do just fine. Nokia managed to introduce a very neat way of editing your pictures while being on the phone, and this is a non-destructive editing, which means that whatever changes you do and you make and apply to your pictures will be saved as a new file and the original will be kept so you should go to this uh, menu button right here and uh, edit and here's a list of all of the actions you can take upon this picture you can quickly auto fix everything rotate the picture enhance brightness or contrast crop, resize, reduce red eyes if you have shot a person and the red eyes occurred due to flash, straighten the picture, flip it horizontally or vertically and that's just it and whatever changes you make it will save it as a new file so your original capture will be untouched. Let's just go back to the home screen and see what else we have here. Now the Facebook application was pre-installed on the Nokia N9 but um, you can also find applications in the Nokia store for Foursquare, for Twitter and you can also install Skype. Now what's particularly interesting and annoying about this phone is that despite the fact that it sports a front-facing camera there is no way in actually using the camera so you cannot video call somebody neither through uh, your normal regular phone calling procedure or, or your data connection or wireless and you can't even make a Skype video call so the first and probably one of the few applications which use the front facing camera on the N9 is a mirror application which is rather strange it will start the camera and as you can see we are here filming and that's pretty much it we hope Nokia fixes this with a new software update which is coming soon real quick we have also notes applications we have a weather application we have your documents application we have YouTube which unfortunately only takes you to the mobile web page which is by the way HTML5 but it's not a dedicated YouTube application playback is okay it's smooth but uh, it's just the website and of course we have some games pre-installed like uh, Angry Birds like Real Golf need for speed shift so on and so forth we have Wi-Fi hotspot functionality and let me tell you that this works very very well you have lots of settings to tweak and um, the range on the Nokia N9 is surprisingly good so uh, while your iPhone 4 might get out of range when it's emitting uh, and it's functioning in Wi-Fi hotspot mode the Nokia N9 still is in range okay let's just get back here 
and take a look at something else the internet browser and um, let's just um, close it all together and fire up a new one first of all most annoying is that it's not supporting multiple tabs instead if you want to open a link in a new tab it will actually open a new browser for you and switching among the two will require you to go to the multitasking screen and switch as you will see right now so let's just go to pocketnow.com the browser is actually really really good it's fast but we have one problem with it it often brings up the checkerboard effect now as you can see we have a huge checkerboard but you might say the page is not yet loaded let's just wait for it to fully load go back to the top and give it a second there we go it's fully loaded and now let's try to swipe you see you got a checkerboard swiping back and still it tries to catch up so you will have to put up with this double tapping to zoom works just fine it takes just a second to render pinch to zoom also works fine else it's very very fluid and switching to landscape is quick and we have a Windows Phone 7 like animation which is good but also the checkerboard will be present in landscape 2 if you want to scroll faster than the phone itself wants you to let's just close this and get back to the main screen of applications and take a look at the music player now the music player is something I like on the Nokia N9 because it has this great representation of all your albums and going into one particular album will bring you the huge album art which really pops up the deep blacks on the AMOLED screen nothing to mention here let's just close it like this and get back to the home screen let's take a quick look at the settings let's go right here and you will see that you have several regions of the screen you have a top region where you can flip the switch on flight mode you have a quick menu to uh, your internet connection whether you are on wireless or on data connection you have your mobile network settings you have general settings for the brightness and as you will notice there is no way in turning off the ambient blind sensor so we are currently maxed out with the settings then you have the bottom part of the screen which is your default settings menu with device bluetooth sounds and vibration wallpaper and so on and so forth you can't really have anything out of the ordinary it's just your typical settings which you might expect from a phone let's just swipe back and let's take a look for a second at the uh, multitasking screen this screen shows you the cards of the applications which are currently open and pinching and zooming will change the display from a 2 by 2 representation to a 3 by 3 representation which is good if you have many applications tapping any one of the screens will take you to the application itself switching between them is really really quick but if you want to close an application you will tap and hold on one and tap the X or if you want to close everything you just tap on close all and you will have a clean fresh start while still at the application screen there is an easy way to rearrange the icons you just tap and hold and you drag the icon wherever you want but you cannot drag it to another screen the screens are fixed and there are no widgets so if you are a widget guy you will not like the Nokia N9 let's just say we're done here and uh, that's pretty much it we have the three panels we have the application list and um, one of the main problems with the Nokia N9 well actually it's not with the device it's with the ecosystem itself is that Mego doesn't have that much applications probably it has the least applications among all of the mobile platforms currently so if you go to store and um, try to find an application like uh, Spotify for instance you will not find it well you will say that I'm wrong because Spotify just recently launched a Mego application but believe me I cannot find it and I will demonstrate it let's just 
tap Spotify. And we have a third party application. Now, this might depend on the uh, actual location of the phone of uh, your account, your geographical location for the account itself. But going back home and uh, going to uh, categories, let's say you want to go to applications, you have all your categories. Let's go into business. And, um, well, as you can see, the scroll bar, there are really not that much applications installed so probably or available so probably you will go through them uh, in a couple of days hopefully this will be fixed in the future when probably Migo will become a little bit more popular even though with Nokia abandoning it that's a very thin chance for it of course as with any uh, Nokia device it comes also with the uh, OV Music, which will soon be rebranded to Nokia Music, is basically your marketplace for music where you can purchase uh, songs, albums, and so on and so forth. If you are into music and purchasing music from your phone, this is the place where you will go on your Nokia N9. Last but not least, let's take a look at the, the gaming performance and the gaming experience of the Nokia N9 and let's try to launch Angry Birds and see how it goes. There we go. So as you can see, the scrolling is fluid and so is the uh, pinching and zooming. So we really don't have anything bad to say here in terms of frame rate performance. Let's try Need for Speed Shift, which is more demanding. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Let's go through it real, real quick. Take a look at all those smudges on the screen. This is one of the bad points of the Nokia N9. Okay. As you can see, it's buttery smooth. And it's very, very responsive, except for my driving skills. It's very playable, it's enjoyable, so uh, nothing bad again to say here. Let's just jump back and quit the application, Let's zoom out first, and there we go, we just close the application altogether. So this was a short, brief look at the software on the Nokia N9. The same phone, well approximately the same phone, will come with Windows Phone 7. It will be called Nokia Lumia 800. Now is it better than Migo? Of course it's better because it's one of the top three platforms currently available. But uh, Migo really has some potential and it's really, really unfortunate that Nokia abandon the platform. I'm sure that with the proper support both from manufacturers and developers it will become a pretty neat little platform but at the moment it's not something you might want to switch to if you are an Android, iOS or Windows Phone user. If you've liked this video please give us a thumbs up. This was Anton D. Knight from PocketNow.com taking a look at the software on the Nokia N9.